George Hamilton IV was uh, many things in country music, um, but one of, the, one of them was that in the 1960s, he was part of a, of a force that kind of broadened what the music was really all about. He brought the great uh, folk singers, many of them from Canada, into the country music mainstream, and it was a time when, when there was this uh, incredible creative energy uh, that, uh, that, that swept through the city. People like Joni Mitchell would come through. George Hamilton IV was the first person to have a hit with a Joni Mitchell song. Uh, so. Woo! Yeah! And so this is a little passage about, uh, about George telling the story of, of going to uh, visit with Joni Mitchell one night and uh, a couple of the guys from Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young were there and Chris Christopherson was there and, uh, uh, and some other people and this is how uh, George remembered it. And he was a part of bringing these forces together uh, to make country music even better than it had been. And this is George, these are George's words. It was quite a night. It was one of those famous exchange of song sessions that were so common in Nashville in those days. Every time people like Joni Mitchell would come through, they would get together with some local pickers, often out at Johnny Cash's house, but someplace, and they would listen to each other's songs. This particular session went on until the wee hours of Sunday morning, and then Joni turned to Chris Christopherson who had been just sitting there quietly while everybody else played. And she said, you haven't played anything yet, Chris. He mumbled some aw shucks reply about how he wasn't a singer, but everybody insisted, so he pulled out a notebook and said he had a couple of new ones and he'd have to read them. He sang Me and Bobby McGee in Sunday Morning Coming Down. I'll never forget it. There he was, a bashful newcomer with his short hair, no beard, and buttoned down collar, and I mean it wasn't an act. That was really how he was. A really genuine kind of person reading his songs out of a notebook while he strummed his guitar. When he finished with those two, there were maybe 60 seconds of total silence. Everybody knew it was the best two songs that had been done that night. People were thinking, who the hell is this? <laughs> and yet everybody knew he was the best in the room. Nash and Crosby told him to look them up if he ever kept, got out to California. And he mumbled something about how Johnny Cash or maybe Roger Miller had said something about cutting some of his stuff. Pretty soon both of them did and after that he was on his way. It was a beautiful period in Nashville.